First of all, I would like to extend a word of thanks to Guitar Salon International for allowing me to use one of their guitars uh, for this tutorial. This is a 2017 Teodoro Perez Maestro model guitar and you'll get to hear the sound and the quality of this guitar throughout the extent of this video tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to play a studio number no. 6 by Fernando Sor. Andres Segovia collected a series of 24 studies that he loved and compiled them together. Some of you may know this piece by the more uh, technical catalog number, Opus 35, number 17 in D major. This has become one of my favorite etudes. If I ever have students that come to me for private lessons but they could only take a limited number of lessons, I always direct them to play some Fernando Sor studies. I think these studies are a wonderful playground to experiment with various phrasing approaches to really develop technique and um, I, I think they, they are just small capsules of uh, great musical riches. Uh, they are beautiful, melodic sounding, and also they allow for a lot of technical and musical experimentation. So without any further delay, let's get straight to work and focus on the first segment of this tutorial. Okay, so let's begin this first segment of the tutorial. Um, what we're going to explore in this tutorial are various musical concepts such as vibrato, uh, the, the forming of bar chords um, in a progressive way, uh, we're also going to talk about phrasing ideas and fingering ideas in order to render a certain musical result. Um, and what we'll do first is just go through the basic notes of each bar, figure out how to play them, and then I'll make some comments having to do with musicality and phrasing and so on and technique. So let's begin. So the piece begins with a pickup note. There has been a little debate here among ourselves whether that pickup note constitutes a bar. Um, it does not, it's just a pickup note to the first bar. So here we go. The first note is an A note played with the first finger on the third string second fret, followed by an F sharp. This F sharp note is played with the second finger on the first string second fret. Followed by an arpeggio, D, A, F sharp, played with a thumb, I, and A finger. Let's try it again, so A, F sharp, D, A, F sharp, followed by an E note, open first string, and this is just a really easy uh, part of the bar to play, it's E, open string, A, G, and E again. Let's try that again. Maybe we'll try it a little bit more slowly, A, F sharp. D is the first note of the second bar. And now we're going to form together a bar chord. Um, this is a D major chord and this is the shape. It's on the second fret. It's in the second position which means that the first finger hovers over the second fret and each finger is assigned to a subsequent fret after that. Um, the way we form this chord on bar number two, this D major chord, rather than grabbing the entire chord from the air which is really challenging to do it's you know you have the the fingers firmly planted into thin air so to speak rather than doing that we're going to form this chord one note at a time and this is a little trick that we classical guitarists use in order to grab these more challenging chords accurately so we're going to play the d note with the second finger first followed by the d note in the bass on the 5th string, 5th fret with a 4th finger. F sharp with the 3rd finger on the 4th string. Back to F sharp and then A. Now notice that with my left hand I formed a partial bar chord, the 1st finger pressing 3 out of the 6 strings. So D, D, F sharp, F sharp again, A. So the progressive formation of this chord goes something like this. Second finger, four, three, 
and then placing the first finger as a partial bar chord. Let's try this. to D, F sharp, and A. And notice that with my right hand I double some notes and I use the thumb to pluck all the bass strings, uh, namely the notes on the fifth and the fourth string. The reason why I do that is because my thumb allows me to play those notes without any scratchy sound. If I were to use my index finger for any of those notes, I would get a little bit of a residual noise. But the thumb, because of the angle at which the thumbnail strikes the string, um, does not uh, render that kind of a noise and residual sound. So let's take bar number two again. D. Let's review now bars now, number one and two. Bar number three now. It begins with an open B note, second string, followed by G, G, B, and open E. So the only press note is the G note on the 6th string 3rd fret. P, I, M, A, G sharp. The G sharp is played with a 3rd finger E on the 4th string 2nd fret and D with a 2nd finger on the 2nd string. And this is again one of those chords that we're not going to grab all together but form it one note at a time. So, in context, the entire bar number three goes like this. And that should release a huge amount of, te of tension from the left hand. If you don't have the mental pressure of grabbing the chord from the get-go, it should really alleviate the pressure and the tension in the hand as you form the chord one note at a time. So let's take bars 1, 2, and 3 together. Now bar number 4 continues with the same D note, followed by open 5th string, E, C sharp, and then E. D note played with the second finger on the second string, open fifth string A, followed by E, and E is going to press four out of the six strings as a partial bar chord. C sharp, already pressed by the first finger on the second string, and then an E note with the fourth finger on the second string fifth fret. So, bar number four. Followed again by A, E, A, again bar number 4, and now the pickup to bar number 5 is a note uh, that's familiar to us, A note on the 3rd string, bar number 5, F sharp, D, A, F sharp. This is again very similar to the previous chord you played in uh, bar number two. Only this time we only need three notes, A, F sharp, and D in the bass. So we're not going to press any notes with fingers number two and three, and so this should be much easier to grab as a chord. Let's take again um, bar number five. D note in the bass is played with a fourth finger on the fifth string, fifth fret. A, F, again open first string, A, G, E, and now instead of going to a D chord, we're going to go to a B minor chord. And again, we're going to form this chord one finger at a time D, B, F sharp, D 
followed by a D sharp, open A, fifth string, F sharp, D sharp. Again, let's take bar number six. Then open first string E. This is bar number seven, followed by G in the bass. And then two simultaneously played notes, E and G, on the fourth string, second fret and open third string. So E, G, E and G together, followed by open second string, C sharp, played with the second finger on the second string, second fret, followed by open fifth string A, E and G again, and then open first string E, and back to that D major chord. And again, rather than grabbing this chord together, just play one note at a time. The first two notes are F sharp and D, so we're going to place third and second fingers together, followed by D in the bass, A, press with the first finger, F sharp with the third finger on the fourth string, and back to D. Okay, so those are the notes for the first eight bars. Now the purpose of this study is not only to play the notes, but to highlight the melody in the context of the accompaniment. And so in order to really get used to the flow of the melody, I would suggest that you isolate all those notes with the upward stem, that's the melodic line, and all the notes with the downward stem, that's the accompaniment. And so in order to really get a good grasp of the melody, I would suggest that you practice just the first, um, uh, the, the, the first voice of this piece. So it would sound something like this. really the melody and if you really want to emphasize that to a level of um, nearing the grotesque it would sound something like this I wouldn't practice this for any other reason other than to really emphasize and solidify the melody in your own minds. And uh, we're now going to move to tutorial number two for this uh, wonderful piece by Fernando Sor, so stay tuned.